Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with a special guest, a returning guest, and an amazing investor, Elise. How are you doing, Elise? I'm so good, Michael. Thank you for having me. Glad to be back. Yeah, let's let's remind people of your story, right? As I recall, uh, full-time employee, or first off, wife, full-time employee, mother of two, uh, investing out of state. Great, right, because you live in a, a very expensive part of the country, as I recall. Uh, so let's remind people if anything I've got wrong, uh, you know, and then tell us where you're at today in your portfolio. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. We, uh, my husband and I, live in Southern California. We're 35 years old. We have a 17 month old and an almost five year old, so our hands are full on that front. Wow. Um, we started investing out of state in 2017 primarily in the Southwest, um, largely Tennessee area, some Kentucky. And we also have, um, we know a property in Indiana. So, uh, can't, can't really make the numbers work here where I live. Um, but we really made the numbers work out of state and we did bird investing, um, and bird our way all the way to 21 properties, wow. all single family homes. And, um, currently we're working on a, a flip, which is our 22nd house, but we're, we're not, we're not holding on to that one. So lots, so lots going on. Um, what was 2021 like? Uh, you know, 2021 rates were really low. I'm going to guess Burr. That, 2021 probably was an amazing year to Burr. I'm just going to guess. Yeah, the numbers were pretty sky high on properties. Um, so I felt like we slowed a bit, but what we did was... Um, we sort of prepared ourselves and we're sort of in a good position right now. We actually locked in. Um, we did a refinance right before um, the rates sort of skyrocketed. Actually, we locked in. You're going to be jealous, Michael. We locked in a 30 year fixed. I think it was a four and a quarter commercial. Uh -huh. loan. Yeah. I mean, we did pay points, but the rate floor to get a four and a quarter rate floor and a 30 year commercial. Um, so we really, um, we really sort of put ourselves in a good position moving forward. So we we own six properties outright and we just secured a line of credit on those. So if we need right. that, and then, um, yeah, we have 14 in a- um, So you did one blanket loan is yeah, the commercial it, loan. Yeah, actually quarter. it's two because they're okay. in different states, but okay. yes, it is um, a portfolio, two portfolio loans because they had to separate it for the different states, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So it's funny you mentioned that because that's actually what Olivia and I did. The first half of 2021, we didn't buy anything because the numbers were stupid. Yes. We wrote lots of offers, but people were paying stupid prices. So right. we, we did the same thing. We refied. I have no debt that's not 30 year fixed at this point. Everything's oh, below four and a half. So we took advantage of that. Yep. A lot of non QM commercial paper as well. Even our apartments. We have apartment buildings. You're going to like this at yes. 3.99. How in the world? Yeah. I paid a couple of points with a non QM lender. 3.9. I have an office building wow. at 3.99. That see, this is like, this is bragging. Like, this is, I mean, <laughs> incredible. Flexing. <laughs> this is flex this is flexing this is posturing this is but I love to see it I'll be your hype woman all day um yeah. those those low rates I mean it's like it's crazy to talk about right now while we're at you know sevens and sixes but yeah uh, dude, we, if we were to do today they'd be in the eights for you and me yeah. oh because commercial yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, they'd be in the eights and then the other thing that both of us did is we raised dry powder right you got you an bet. equity dry powder cash access to capital oh yeah 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 we both did that um, yeah, I'm I'm sitting on more cash today and access to cash uh, than I've ever had because I'm ecstatic by what's prepared. Coming. Exactly. And that's the thing, like before, right? Like I couldn't wait to offload my cash. It's just and now it's go, positioning, go, go. right? Yeah, right? I'm like, get it into something. It's got to it's going to it's going to grow. My money's got to make money. It's got to grow. I got to get it in. And now it's about positioning. Like, that's how I feel. Right. It's about being prepared. Yeah. So it's curious. Uh, I don't know if, if you've seen this. We're just wrapping here. I, I actually, I didn't get a deal out of the MLS for three years. And I look every day. I mean, that's just how nutty the market was. Yeah. Uh, but I closed on my first deal out of the MLS five weeks ago. And I close on my second tomorrow. I wire the money tomorrow. So have nice. you seen the MLS, you know, are opportunities showing up or, or not yet in Tennessee and Kentucky? 
Not yet. Um, I will say we have seen sort of changes in the market, but it is in the higher priced homes, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where we've seen it. We've start to seen like, um, I think maybe it's you that's referred to like wish list pricing and yep. things like that, right? I think it was you. Mm -hmm. um, so we have absolutely seen the higher priced market start to come down. There is still a lot of demand for sort of the B and C class right now, um, but we'll see, we'll see, right? Um, yep. We'll see how yep. that shapes out. Yeah. yeah. So Michael, I have to ask, were those homes that were sitting on the market past any certain time? Is that, was it days on one the market? Is, one was 62 days. Oh yeah. And I got a 30, per, I got it for 30% less, 28% less than list price. And the other one surprisingly was only 17 days, but it okay. had all the right things wrong with it. You know? So I was like, take a shot. I, and I again, the market showed them. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm writing, I've written more offers in the last 45 days than I think I did in the last 12 months. Because it's time, I, I know, and have now proven that there are motivated sellers hiding in the market. Right. So I'm going to write a lot of stupid ass offers. And right. dude, my whole career has been, when everybody's going that direction, I go that way. Good. When you know, and I'm like a shark. I, yeah, exactly. I'm like I don't mind swimming alone. I don't need the comfort of others. You know what? Too there's seasonality that people can take advantage of. People really don't buy, especially in the primary, like for primary houses, right? They're not really going and buying their primary houses November, December. So on top of the interest rates that we've seen, right, that's sort of reflect having its own reflection in the market, people might get scared when there's no offers at all November, December. And you can, you know, you can sit back and say, look, the market's real bad. And it could even a little piece of it be seasonality, oh, sure it but uh, who knows? Dude, thinking, we don't know. Dude. All my offers, Elise, actually yeah. say I will close before Christmas. So you, you the idea is you can have a bunch of cash to buy Christmas presents. There I mean, I'll go. use anything to my advantage. Offload. Yeah, let me help you. Yeah. Let me help yeah. you. I will help you. Yeah, <laughs> my price, your your timeline. So I, I'm curious, when you look out into the future, uh, are you going to stay with single family homes? You like it? You've got a track record. It makes sense to you. Or are you, you going to go somewhere else? You know, it's funny. It's there's always this sort of step ladder, right, to investing, and then you know you get into the different asset classes and multifamily. We've sort of stayed in our lane until now, until now, um, and that was because honestly, the cap rates on multifamily was terrible. They were they have been terrible for like so stupid, and people were throwing stupid money. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know if they were just ten thirty one ing and it was a ton, like they needed to get in something. I don't know, but we they were, were being more, greedy and stupid. Let's just call it what it is, right? The money yeah. did not make it did, and I'm sitting over here. I'm like, is there something I'm missing? This does not make sense financially. Yeah. So we actually, I mean, we kept stacking. I mean, we kept, you know, um, purchasing, um, but we never moved into that class because the numbers didn't make sense. Now, I, love I am not opposed to doing and, you know, we're not opposed to buying multifamily at all. Um, it's just the numbers have to make yeah. sense. And so we'll sit back and see what happens here, um, yeah. you know, That's in these amazing. next in the next few years. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's funny. People ask me all the time. Cause they, they always think they're different. I'm like, I put them in the same damn spreadsheet. I'll, yeah. I'm going to buy whatever's the highest yield. If it's a little 500 square foot house, right. so be it. If it's a 40 unit apartment building, so be it. Right. I, I'm not going to buy a 40 unit building just to say I have 40 units. To say, you know, what is interesting though, I'll share. We are kind of interested in maybe converting, you know, maybe dabbling a little bit in the midterm space. Have you well, done that a, yet? I haven't, but it makes total sense to me. Right. Yeah. You, you, you know, you're given your profession. It's, it's very yeah. you know, healthcare and all of that. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I actually like midterm a lot more than the day. Cause again, what people don't realize is daily rental short term. Uh huh. It's a, it's a business. It, it's not, yes, it is. there's, it's, a, yes, it's it treated is. differently on the tax in the tax right. code. Yeah. And it's not something to be honest. I mean, I, I never say never, right? Um, if we weren't doing our full time W two jobs, I'm a nursing supervisor. My husband has his own W two job. Um, you know, maybe we would dabble more in something that was as active as that in the future. But um, the midterm space is sort of a happy medium. Um, it's a nice compromise to get a higher cash flow. You know, the deal is, of course, you'd have to furnish it. But um, we were looking at either, uh, you know a midterm where you just, you have to function the whole unit, you, you know, sure. the whole property or even a rent by the room strategy people are doing. So there's, yeah. I, you know, we're sort of looking at ways to optimize our cash flow, um, but have still like the longer leases in place. So that's, it's yeah, sort of I, I, I've certainly looked at those, but and maybe it's just cause I'm a couple steps ahead. I've looked at yeah. it. My Olivia and I talked yeah. and I'm like, 
we're not changing anything we do. You're not. We, okay. Okay. We got, we got a good thing going. I mean, I had yep. a perfect property for it right around the, from a hospital in Fresno yes. where I buy and invest. And I'm like, I don't want to, I don't, I no, I don't want to do that. Okay. You know what? Okay. So, you know, it's, um, I'm sort of salivating. Everyone's posting their numbers on short-term rentals and I'm trying to write, put my little bl horse blinders on exactly. Um, but so, you know, someone intrigued me the other day. Um, I met them at the bigger pockets conference and we were talking, they do a rent by the room strategy and it gives the benefit of the higher cash flow, right? Sure. But it's 12 month leases. So they, and you don't have to furnish the bedroom. So now you're only furnishing a portion of common. the home, the yeah. common areas, correct? They, and um, you get 12 month leases. So you're not dealing with people in and out, in and out. So um, I sort of thought maybe that's a happy, you know, happy medium to get to that optimized cash flow. But we'll see. I mean, to be honest, we're in a good spot that we can sit here and be like, you know, do I want to do this? It's Inker. not right. Yeah. Do I want to yeah. dabble? Maybe I want to convert one of our 21 houses. Like, let's see, you know, so we'll see how, but I just want yeah. to share that we're thinking about that. Yeah, I think that's great. Uh, I, you know, when you go forward into 2022, you still think you're going to burr. Obviously you're doing a flip now, which means you're going to exit stacks and more cash. Yeah. Uh, is burr still the right, you think burr works going forward? Or you think it's kind of I think Burr is tough in this, in this, um, with this, with the rates right now, right? It's, it's getting infinitely harder to find deals that make sense with the rates today. Um, because you got to think about positive leveraging. So if I'm borrowing at this, right. And my debt is this, you have to always make higher. And so it's getting, a it's getting to be a tougher and tougher ask. And so that's why I think being able to pivot, adjust, look at different strategies, be ready with other sources of, um, capital, but I don't think we're going to, you know, be finding deals that we can pull money out and it still makes sense. No alligator properties, right? <laughs> Somebody's read my book. Somebody's read your book. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So uh, where can people follow you? Because you put out amazing stuff. Where do you want them to follow you? Um, you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is investing for financial freedom. Nice. And then my husband's um, active on bigger pockets. You can just find him, Todd Rasmussen. Awesome. Very cool. And video number two, folks, we're going to ask Elise about being a full-time employee, mother of two, and investing in real estate, how she does it. Because apparently she's superwoman. And we're going to find out why. Thank you.